guys, it's Mama Nessa here with another five for five. I'm 21. Now, today's five for five is going to be a revamp on the normal five for five. I normally go and purchase five items for under five bucks from a local grocery store or a store that carries food. Well, today I did do that, but I also have the same recipe so that you can use leftovers and cut down your cost of this five for five. So with this recipe, what I have is leftover turkey from the holidays. Now, if you have leftover chicken, it also works. If you have leftover beef or leftover pork or um, any other meat, you could actually also do it with shrimp. But it's for any leftovers that you may possibly have. You can use it in this recipe. So with this recipe, we're going to do cabbage and sausage with onions and tomatoes. Now here I have a chicken breast or sorry, a turkey breast from when we cooked turkey. So you can very well substitute the turkey breast for the turkey sausage. You can also substitute chicken, like I said before, beef, pork, shrimp, um, it won't work well with fish. I wouldn't try it. I mean, if that's your thing, go ahead. But these are what we have. Also, as you see here, this is the Walmart receipt. I did go over by 12 cents, but that can also be rectified by either finding a smaller onion or finding a smaller piece of cabbage. Now, let's start cooking. So I'm basically just shredding my turkey. I cut it into smaller pieces that are easier to handle and I am just shredding them in a pan that I've already chopped up some onions. I like my onions more like ribbons um, in this dish at least because then it matches the same size as the cabbage. With our cabbage. I pretty much put um, oil in the bottom of the pan and I like using sesame oil because it has really great flavor and the fat content of it is a, it's healthier fat than if you use like a vegetable or a canola oil. Now if you were using sausage you would do the same. You would just chop the sausage up and throw it in the pot with the onions. Um, what we're gonna do here is I do have my setting on medium high because you want your onions to sweat and you want them to cook. The meat is already cooked. It could be cooked a little bit longer. I do um, always cook my turkey a little bit on the underside because I don't really eat just the turkey I always use it in something to cook so my turkey is still a little bit pink which means it'll also cook with the onions and soak up some more of that onion flavor while that's heating up and cooking our cabbage is sweating pretty good you see that steam if you could smell the flavor from the sesame oil oh my gosh it smells delicious um but really you just want you want this to sweat down a lot to soak up the flavors from um the oil and once it gets to where the cabbage is soft then you can start adding your seasoning the seasoning that i'm going to add is i have a salt free seasoning you can find these at the dollar tree so this whole entire thing is one dollar 
it's great if you're trying to watch your sodium intake if you have high blood pressure diabetes that kind of thing it's amazing um i also have garlic powder you can also find these at the dollar tree as well and then i have good old mccormick's black ground pepper um these you can find these just about anywhere they run anywhere between two and three dollars for this whole thing and i use it a lot a little bit goes a long way all right so i have seasonings in the pot now i'm going to add my tomatoes do not drain them these are um red gold original tex-mex you can also use rotel um you can use any other diced tomatoes with green chilies i like this brand um just because it is 100% natural, non-GMO, non-BPA liner. So I feel that even if I might be eating some slightly unhealthy stuff when I use it, I kind of sort of feel like I'm doing a good job for my family by at least getting a product that is healthy. So once you add your diced tomatoes, then you want to mix it in. When your onions start to get clear and your chicken starts to get white, go ahead and combine it with your cabbage and stir it around really well. Let it heat up for a good five to 10 minutes so that all the flavors become incorporated. You can also taste it to see if your seasoning tastes like you like it. Um, if, if so, and everything is good, just let it simmer. If not, go ahead and add some more seasoning. So this is the finished product. Looks delicious, doesn't it? Hope you guys enjoyed the recipe. If you have any ideas for any recipes, make sure you leave them down in the comments. And other than that, y'all have a wonderful day. I'm in love with the cocoa.